your dad is still not convinced. You can continue watching this video to learn more and explain better. Now let us consider the case of the smaller wheel. With its center of mass at its center from where the handlebar is connected. Let the axis along which the handlebar is be the y axis and the axis perpendicular to it be the x axis. Considering F1 to be the radial force acting at an angle alpha and beta with x and y axes, taking the components of this force along x and y axes, you can notice that alpha is smaller than beta. So the x component will be greater than y component of the force which will be absorbed by shock absorbers but the x component of the force will cause bending and sudden reduction in the speed creating shocks, tear and wear which will eventually lead to damage. Now let us consider the case of the bigger wheel with the center of mass at its center from where the handlebar is connected taking axis of the handlebar as y and the axis perpendicular to it as x. The radial force acting on the wheel because of the obstacle is F2 which we already know is smaller than F1. Making an angle alpha with the x and beta with the y axis. And again we can take the components of the force along x and y axis. We can clearly see that alpha in this case is bigger than beta making x component smaller than y component. In the same way as in case of a smaller wheel the force along the y axis will be absorbed by shock absorbers and the smaller x component will cause less damage relative to that of the smaller wheel. You can easily say that smaller wheels are less better. Now you can say thank you by clicking like, share and subscribe buttons.